Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Bieber and welcome back to Collodian Chat. So today's subject is going to be about shooting wet plate in the field. And I'm going to try to keep this one short. So at some point in the future I'll do a longer video about shooting wet plate in the field in general where I'll go into all the equipment and all the procedures that I use to work effectively in the field. But today I want to talk about a particular problem, which is washing plates in the field or washing plates after you're in the field. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the problem, about my cheap and fairly straightforward solution for 4x5 plates. And I'm going to introduce a new 3D printed design that I'm releasing to essentially enable you to do the same thing for larger plates as well. So I'll start with the problem. The ideal flow for making any wet plate photograph is you shoot the plate, you develop it, you fix it, and then it goes straight into a running water rinse. Uh, you want to rinse it for a good long time. You want to get all of the excess fixer out of the plate uh, to make sure it's not going to degrade your image over time. Now, if you're shooting in the field, obviously that's a problem because you're probably not going to have access to running water. There are an array of different solutions people have found to this problem. You know, you'll sometimes see people doing kind of a drip rinse where they have a tray and they have maybe a jug of water with a very small hole in it and the jug is just dripping one drop at a time into the tray. Or maybe they'll have the plate just soaking in a series of trays and they empty the water every time. I'm not a fan of these methods because you really need running water to effectively wash a plate. You know, you can make yourself feel like you've washed a plate with a lot of less effective methods. And the problem is that you won't know that you've made a mistake until potentially many years later when the image starts to degrade on the plate. So you always wanna be safe. You wanna give your plates plenty of rinse time. Now, you could just carry an absolutely absurd amount of water with you. Um, and if you're shooting out of, you know, say a trailer or a van, that may actually be a feasible solution. Or if you're fixing with cyanide, you may be able to carry enough water for the relatively short rinse time that your plates are going to need. But if you've seen my other videos, you know I'm very much a fan of not using cyanide in wet plate. So what option does that leave us? Well, you don't have to rinse your plate immediately. You can keep the plate wet, and as long as it doesn't dry out, you can take it home and wash it there with the comfort of running water. So there's basically two ways you can do that, right? One is to carry a big old tub of water with a rack for the plates in it. I'm not a fan of that method, although it does work fine, simply because it, it's difficult, right? You know, wet plate in the field is already difficult enough without carrying a giant tub of water around. Water is two things. It's very heavy and it's very difficult to contain when you have a lot of it sloshing around. So, you know, first of all, you're looking at adding a lot of weight to what you're carrying around, which if you're going, you know, a significant distance from your vehicle can be a problem. And also, it's just very hard to get a container that's so watertight that it won't drip. Uh, as you get a large volume of water inside of it sloshing back and forth. So my preferred approach is rather than submerging the plate in water, to coat the plate in this solution. So this is 50-50 glycerin and distilled water. Uh, it's just regular vegetable glycerin. You can get it in small bottles from the beauty section at CVS. You can get it in much bigger bottles uh, at a much lower price per unit from, say, Amazon or any other retailer. And all you do is you just mix it with an equal volume of distilled water. I like to put it in a flask like this. I shake it up. I keep this with my chemistry. And when I'm finished developing and fixing a plate, I just flow this mixture across the plate the same way that I would collodion. And even as even as it seems to be dripping off of the plate, enough of it is going to stick to the plate to keep it sufficiently moist that it's still going to be, you know, it's still going to be fine to wash it off and then give it a good rinse when you get home. Now, the ideal way to do that is actually to apply the glycerin after the development step. Um, if, you, if you don't fix the plate, then it's not going to be stewing in the fixer that entire time and it'll be much easier to rinse all the fixer out. 
The downside to that approach, of course, is that if you don't fix, you don't necessarily know how well exposed and developed your plate is. Um, so for me, if I'm strapped for time, I usually just develop and fix in the field, and then I coat with glycerin and I rinse at home. That's probably not strictly ideal. You know, maybe in a decade or two, my plates will start to fade a little bit. I think if you have some more time to work, probably the ideal compromise would be to make one plate fix and, sorry, develop and fix it, make sure the exposure and the development time are good, and then you can just develop the rest of your plates for the same amount of time in that session and fix them all and rinse them when you get home. So, once you've glycerin the plate, the problem is how do you keep it, you know, how do you store it, right? Because you can't just throw them in a box, they'll scratch each other up. Well, it turns out for four by five plates, there's a really simple, really elegant solution to this. So you just get any old big kind of Tupperware style bin. And what I put my plates in when I'm shooting in the field are these. And these are just good old fashioned CD jewel cases. You know, buy the, the cheapest pack of 24 or whatever you can get on Amazon, take all the trays out of them, and then you can just take a four x five plate and set it directly in here, close the lid, put it in a box, a whole bunch of them will go in there, and that way they won't scratch each other up. It works great for four x five. Now the problem is, as you go to bigger sizes, it becomes more difficult to find an off-the-shelf solution. That hasn't been a problem for me thus far because I've only shot 4x5 in the field. My 5x7 and 8x10 cameras are studio cameras that are very much not getting dragged out into the world with me. But I know a lot of people like to shoot bigger plates in the field, and I'm going to start shooting 5x12 in the field soon, which will definitely not fit in the CD case. So what other options are there? Um, DVD cases would be perfect for 5x7, except they don't have removable trays the way that the CD jewel cases do. I have seen some, uh, some A4 plastic paper baskets that nest, which I think might work well for 8x10, but I've never tested it. Uh, if anyone has experience with that, I'd love to hear from you. But what I cooked up to solve my problem for 5x12 is this 3D printed tray. So this tray is, it's got kind of a mesh bottom, so you don't have to worry about, you know, your glycerin mixture pooling up in the bottom, it'll flow right through. It's got raised edges around the sides to make sure that your plate isn't going anywhere. And it has these kinds of uh, posts all around the edge, which they use to nest, right? So on the bottom of this, there are corresponding holes to those posts. So let's take a five by 12 plate here. And this is just a standard window glass thickness. And this is a little bit lower than flush with the edges of the tray. So you don't have to worry about anything falling out here. And the mesh also allows you to get your fingers up underneath here to push the tray up when you're ready to take it out of the tray. So one tray loads in easily enough. Now when I'm ready to shoot another plate, I want to store it as well to get it home. I just go ahead and I take another one. I put it on top. Now as you can see here, these, the holes in the bottom of this are set to just the right depth so that you get, uh, I would say, maybe about a centimeter or two of space in between one tray and the next. So there's no risk of your tray of your plates getting scratched up. And you can just print as many of these trays as you want. Load a plate into each one. Just like so. And that will give you a nice stack of plates that you can just put right into your you know, storage box of choice. I find that those Tupperware style bins work great uh, at containing all the mess and slop that ends up in the bottom of the box. And then you can take this stack out at home, just start disassembling it, taking the plates out. And all you have to do is when you get to each one, you give it a good rinse under, you know, kind of the faucet to rinse the glycerin off. And you just put it in your washing tray, let it rinse for whatever the appropriate amount of time is for your fixer, and you're good to go. Now I'm going to include the Thingiverse link for this tray design in the description of this video. Um, 
I built this as, I designed this as a parametric model, so you can very easily change the size of this if you have FreeCAD to any dimensions that you please. You know, I've got five by 12 trays here. These do take a while to print. I think this was like a 12 or 13 hour print, but that's fine. You know, every time you have a spare day for a while, you print one and before you know it, you've got a decent little collection built up. I'm also going to include pre-made STLs for the five by seven, or sorry, four by five, five by seven, and eight by 10 sizes, which I know are more likely to be useful to other photographers. But, you know, of course you can remake it in any size that you want. So that's all that I've got for you today. Hope you enjoy the models and uh, have fun shooting in the field. Until next time.